You embarrassed to scream while you getting hurt? Are you serious? Yo, I would have been like- ah! Sup, those. Sup, though. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? How y'all living? Let me know that in the comment section below. It's been a minute since I did a story. I know y'all miss them. Here we go. I don't got no snacks. But I got my cuddle buddy right here. I got you. You got yours? All right, then. Let's get it. You don't? Oh, you shut up. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button to never miss a scary story. Okay. If you are, be sure to click the notification bell and click the like button. Okay. Thank you. A Welcome. girl identified only by the initials JL, who was 18 at the time, was alone in her high school hallway when suddenly the janitor, seemingly from nowhere, grabbed her and forced himself on her. Oh, no. Then whispered in her ear, you know I love you. You're watching Darkness Prevails, the best place to share your creepy stories with the world. Okay. Because this world is a strange one. High school is creepy. There are so many people around, so there's basically always creeps at every age at any time. I mean creepy janitors, weird students, and suspicious teachers. It's a wonder any of us make it out alive. And then lunch ladies. And fellas, lunch ladies and lunch fellas. Don't, don't leave, don't, don't leave nobody out on this. You know, it's the teachers, janitors, right, principals, assistant principal, right? It's the, uh, lunch, um, lunch ladies, lunch fellas, right? It's the student teachers. I say that right. I mean, substitute teachers. You got the, uh... Am I missing anything? Teacher's pet. There's that. I hate them. Oh, my God. <sighs> if you're a teacher's pet... You clocking up. Nobody likes a teacher's pet. And then you got them, and then you got the motherfuckers, then you, then you got the people that's like, that clean around the school, right? But they're, they're not a part of the school, but they're like the ones that just pick up the trash. That's like, that's around the school, you know what I mean? It's like one of those people that just be picking up trash, like random, randomly off the street. You know, like, that's, that's their job, you know? You got the, uh, Oh, then you got the, uh, if you have them at your school, the, um, the security, police officers, uh, you know, they, sometimes they be in cahoots, I'm still, I, I talk a lot, so I'm gonna go back, sorry, sorry. So hold on to your diploma, after hearing these allegedly true high school horror stories. I got mine. You're going to be glad you never have to go back. Okay. If you want to be in a future video, I'm looking for creepy stories from Toys R Us. So send me your tales at darknessprevails.org slash submit. Now then, let's hear even more reasons why school may make us miserable. If you got your diploma, diploma. Number one. Let me know. Drama Club Creep. Submitted by Kaiba Girl 17 It was my junior year of high school. I was taking drama as my elective for the spring semester, right. and we were all getting ready for the spring play. There was one boy in my class named Aaron. There it is. Aaron was new to the school, and rumors had it that he had come from a place for troubled children. As a victim of rumors myself, throughout high school, I don't pay much attention to them, so I thought I'd get to know him better. For the first few weeks, he seemed pretty cool, he always told me how pretty I was, okay. and that he was glad he'd taken drama, since it gave him a chance to meet me. Okay. Fast forward to a few months before summer break, we're rehearsing for the play. I was one of the female leads, and Aaron was helping paint the backdrops. 
One afternoon, while we were taking a break, I wanted to ask if he wanted to go get some snacks and soda with me. I saw him standing by the backdrop with paint all over his hands, and he was licking it. I remember feeling my face contort in confusion. What was he doing? I made my way over to him. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay. So you're still going forward with this after licking the, pla the paint off his, off his hands. Who does that? Who does that? Nobody does that. At all. Talking about some... Like it's blood or something. It could be blood. It could be blood. I just thought about that. Who? <laughs> I'm so I'm so extra. <laughs> no, but like in all seriousness, like that's crazy. I would have been like, if I would have seen that and he was licking paint, I would have not even went any further. Um, I probably would have dropped out of that elective, or or whatever it's called, and found a new one. Right, because that's that's weird. That's you know. It's weird. So, yeah, he is. Stay the hell over there, please. You do that, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be Gucci. We're gonna we're gonna be all right. Not really, because we still go to the same school. I grabbed his wrist and asked what he was thinking, licking paint like that. And I kid you not, this is what he replied what do you say? What with do you a say? dazed look in his eyes. What do you say? I wanted to see if brown paint tasted as much like chocolate as it looks. What the fuck? You want to try some? He stuck his hand out toward me, and I shook my head. From there, I should have known things were going to get weirder. Oh. Whenever I was on stage with the others, Aaron would sit and watch. Whenever I spoke my lines, he would yell in a loud, obnoxious voice, We can't hear you. Speak up. Despite knowing everyone could hear me, it was annoying, but I just thought he was trying to get attention from it, and I... You're creepy. Get the hell out of here. Ignored him. Then he started throwing things at me. What? I reported him to our drama teacher, but she told me it wasn't that big of a deal. One day, a week or two after the play, which I ended up missing due to catching the flu... Something happened that still haunts me to this day. Aaron and I were the only juniors in our class. All the others were seniors and had gone on their senior trip. Our teacher, Miss J, told us, since it was just the three of us, she would buy us some sandwiches from Subway since our school allowed students and faculties to order lunch. She then left for the office. Aaron apologized for his past behavior over the last few weeks, and to make amends, he said he had been working on a costume that he wanted to show me backstage. There was one final play for the year, and I hoped to be in it. He said that this costume would be the perfect one to audition in. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, I was a tad sheltered as a child, so even at the age of 16, I was innocent to the ways of people like this. What I'm saying is, I wasn't suspicious of this in the slightest. I followed Aaron backstage to the costume room. Wow. The second I entered the room and shut the door, Aaron shoved me against the wall, pinning me by my arms, and he pressed himself up against me. I tried to push him off, but he was 5'9 and 170 pounds, compared to my 5'4 at 130. We're going to do something together, he whispered to me, and you're going to like it. My like hell I am. Like hell I am. You don't go, if you have Adidas, you don't go anywhere without your Adidas. If you, if you do, you clucking up to the max, right? But like, you know, I, I know, I know, I know it's new people may, may come across this video. It'd be like their first video that they see of this, of, you know, on the, on the channel. So I want to say, I want to say welcome, right? Love you, off bucks, right? But like, the reason I say Adidas is because 
Adidas is like the best running shoes hands down in the game. You know, Cluck Nike, Cluck Reebok, Cluck Fans, Cluck All that. All right. If you if you if you need to get somewhere quick, quick uh, quickly, you need and or you need a haul ass for some reason, you do it in Adidas. That's first and foremost, right? But like, if she would have had on Adidas, this is how I know she's not having on Adidas because no matter what type of Adidas you have on, as far as like shoes, right? If she had it the whole time. She would have never been in this situation. You know why? Because not only are Adidas shoes the best in the game, right? They also think for you, too. You know? You can't just wear Adidas and that's it. You have to be one with Adidas. You have to be, you know, on the... They, 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 they got to be connected with you. You feel me? Do You, you, you can't just... Put on Adidas and expect, you know, you know, for for them to do all the work for you. Nah, there has to be a connection. Like me and my Adidas, we got connections, right? That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So I say that to say this: if she would have had on Adidas. The Adidas would have been talking to her. What's that? What's that? What, how, what is that? It's not like not really talking, but you're talking in the in the mind. It's like is there a telepath? Telekinesis? Tele? I don't know. They did it in Spy Kids 3D. If you ever remember that movie, but you're talking through your mind. So like you're talking to your shoes, and you choose your shoes are talking. You're having like a full long conversation, right? But it's all in your head. And it's all in the, you know, in the shoe's head too. You know, you're, you're, you're talking, but it's through the mind. Because if I was Adidas, and you was wearing me, I'd be like, bitch, you're clocking up right now. Get the hell out of here. Fuck, I'm going to do it for you. Eyes widened, and I tried to scream. He shoved his hand on my mouth and said, you're not going to make a sound. And he grinned. He got hurt. He sounded so sure of himself. At that moment, I can't explain it, but I lost it. He got the clap. Biting his hand and my mouth being freed, I screamed, No! Slamming my knee into him, Aaron cried out and fell to his knees as I squirmed free. I said no! I shouted over and over and over as I raced from the room and through the halls. Wanting anyone and everyone to hear me. As I ran for the office, I saw Miss J. Where are you going? She demanded. I'm not going back there, I screamed at her. After I told the principal everything that had happened, he took my word for it. Aaron was not only arrested, but expelled. To this day, I wonder how I could have been so stupid. Everyone has repeatedly assured me it was not my fault and that I was lucky that I knew to fight. After that incident, I never saw Aaron again, and he'd be smart not to show his face to me anymore. Cause that's, that's because Aaron Number has... Two, my ex tried to end me. Ah, oh, shit. Submitted by Trey. Aaron has chlamydia. That's why. This happened when I was 17 years old. Right. I grew up in Texas, specifically Brazoria County, and I was a junior in high school. I was one of those socially awkward types of people. Mm -hmm. That school year, I had the first period lunch, so one day during lunch, I noticed a girl at the end of one of the tables. She never sat with anybody, and I noticed that no one ever talked to her. I don't know why, but I felt inclined to talk to her. Maybe I felt bad for her, or maybe I could empathize with her situation. Anyway, I went over to her table and introduced myself, and we began talking. Maybe there's a reason she's sitting by herself. Maybe there's a reason she's not talking to nobody. Nobody's talking to her. 
Yeah. You feel me? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just maybe. You're about to get clocked up. You know. Um, I mean, there's been several times when I was in school. And, like, I've noticed people just being by themselves. Nine times out of ten, I didn't, I did not join that person. But that one percent, I did. And trust and believe me, I had Adidas. I don't know if I, I don't know if I had Adidas back in the day as much as I do now. But, like, I definitely had my guard up and I was very aware and cautious because... You know, people, I don't know, man. People can surprise you when you least expect it. Just saying. She might do something to you. Just saying. Keep your guard up. Be cautious. Be on high alert. You feel me? All right. Her name was apparently Kelly. Huh. And her mother worked in the school kitchen. Oh. Kelly was quite beautiful. She was five foot six and very slim. After a while, I asked if she had minded me sitting down with her, but she just smiled and said it was okay. Oh, she talks? We talked for the remaining 20 minutes of our lunch period. Then we began sitting together and talking a few days after that. Okay. And soon, she asked me if I wanted to go out with her. Ooh, whoa. My brain went 100 miles per hour. That escalated fast. I said yes. We made plans later for that day. What the fuck? Kelly was a senior, so I thought it was kind of cool to date someone a year older than me. We ended up going to the movies around 7.30 p.m. About halfway through the movie, she began putting her hand on me, which was okay with me, by the way. Keep in mind that at the moment, there were people all around us in the movie theater, and this was the first time we had ever gone out like this. What? So when Kelly suddenly grabbed me inappropriately out of nowhere... Not even trying to be subtle about it. It took me by surprise, and I pushed her hand away from me. Oh. I mean, of course I was attracted to her. But this was our first date, and we were in public. There were already people looking at us funny from that. But, oh boy. Kelly did not like that I pushed her away. Oh, shit. Not one bit. Don't make her mad. When I looked her in the face. Her eyes were filled with rage and hatred. Get the hell out of I'd there. I've never seen anyone look like that before. Run! And it scared me. In the middle of the theater, during the movie, she stood bolt upright, and she screamed at me at the top of her lungs. So what? Am I not pretty enough for you? I tried to get her to calm down. She was making a scene, and the 40 people around us trying to enjoy the movie were no longer watching the movie. They were watching us. But Kelly didn't even blink. She never took her eyes off of me. At that moment, I don't think I ever saw her breathe, either. This chick was psycho. I pulled her out of the theater. Out in the corridor, she still wasn't calming down. Then, suddenly, she stormed out of the building after saying she needed to get something from her car. I was left bewildered and confused. I took the opportunity to go to the bathroom. I used one of the stalls to pee and kind of think for a moment. I've never been a big fan of the urinals. Around that time, I heard Kelly's voice. She was in the men's bathroom now. Okay. She was somehow angry. Do y'all realize that all of this happened in one day? I think it happened, like, it's pretty late for me, um, right now, and I'm like, I'm like 70% tired, so if I'm not mistaken, all of this happened in one day, right, from you noticing, no, noticing this girl, sitting all alone, for some reason, right, you got that. All the way until she 
She's trying to fucking kill you. Yo. Come on. This is why you don't do that. I especially don't do that. I like to get to know the person. You know. Give it a couple. Uh, weeks. Or a couple months. Depending on the situation. And our relationship. You know. If we're in school. Give it. Say a couple months. We at work. And I just met you. Give it a couple weeks. You know. If uh, I met you at a bar. <laughs> yeah. Be lucky if I give you a year. Um, Cause more than life. More, more often than not. I'm going to be tipsy at a bar. Just saying. Like. But like. There was no. Break. There was no. You know. Hey, what's your name? Oh, okay. My name is Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you talk for a little bit. Next day. Hey, how you doing? Good. I'm good. Yada, 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 yada. Week pass. Um, so, how you been? Okay, cool. Yada, 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 yeah. Three weeks pass. Um, you know, a group. Some of my friends and I are going to the movies. Do you want to come? Oh, okay. No, oh, it's all right. You know. Couple months pass. We're going to exchange numbers. Ah, uh, no, scratch that. Be, uh, so, social medias. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not rocking with that. You literally did a lot of stuff that would normally take a couple of days, maybe some weeks. You fast forward like a motherfucker. In one day. What? So, you're clucking up. She clucking up. Everybody is clucking up in this situation. Right? Because if I was in a the movie theater, right? And something like that went on. Well, I paid for the ticket. So, like, I'm going to see it. But, like, I'm going to movie hop. Like I used to. <laughs> I used to movie hop. <laughs> Yo, story time real fast. I used to movie hop a lot in my younger days. And for anybody that doesn't know what movie hop is, it's like when you go to a movie theater, right? And you only buy one ticket to see that one movie. But then you notice some other movies are playing. So you try to finesse, right? You try to sneak. Right? Into another movie theater while being seen. And then you watch that movie. Because after your movie's over. There's like. I don't know. Like 10 other movies that, that are playing. Or about to start. Right? And then you just movie hop to the next one. To the next one. To the next one. Yeah. You feel me? Before you know it. you Because you go to the movie. 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. Right? If you movie hopping. You're not coming back until like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. That's what I'm saying. Yo. Hey, I used to get down. You feel me? <laughs> oh my god. Nah man, but yeah, you you literally you you just did that. Damn, man. Oh man. You have nobody you have nobody to blame but yourself. Just lame. Better than before. No one treats me like this. She said, and then I heard a metallic clicking sound, or maybe it was more of a snap. I peered through the crack of the stall door, and I saw that she was holding a knife in her hand. I double-checked the lock, then I backed away from the stall door. Her footsteps came closer, until I could see her shoes at the bottom of the stall. God damn. As she began to fiddle and rattle with the lock, I saw it slowly coming open. In only a few seconds' time, the door would open wide, and I'd be trapped in a corner, only a few feet between me and a psycho with a knife. What? That's when I heard another voice. Uh, miss, this is the men's restroom. It was a guy, older, and he sounded bigger. Bigger than me, at least. Oh. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. What? A there was another snap. And what? finally, she exited the bathroom. Where did a knife come from? I opened the stall door, 
and I saw that it was one of the employees of the theater. Coming in to wash his hands, I told him what he had just walked in on, and I explained everything that had happened, and that people may be in danger, specifically me. He reported the incident to his boss. His boss pulled me aside and told me that he saw the girl exit the building, and that multiple employees saw her with a knife. Luckily, I never heard from Kelly again, and I didn't see her back at school either. So, pretty girl, with horrible insecurity and anger issues, I never want to see you again. Yo! Yo! That's a- Yo! That's crazy, that's a- that's enough for me to change, like, schools and, sh and school districts. That's scary as hell. Where the hell she get the knife from? Maybe I missed something, but where did she get the knife from? That's crazy. Why would you bring a knife? Don't tell me it's for self-defense. Clock that. Yo, that was that movie, like movie, a movie worker or employee that works at the movies. And he told me what was going on and why she was in the bathroom. I would have smooth act like I just didn't hear that. I, he, all right, so say for instance, right? I'm walking in the bathroom. I see that, right? I take care of my business, psst, pan, right? And then I'm washing my hands. Hold me in the, in the, in the, in the, in the bathroom that's about to get clucked up. He tells me, right? Because the lady, she's already, she's out, she's out, right? She's, I guess she's like outside the bathroom. Lady tells, I mean, the guy tells me, right, you know, everything that's going on with her, uh, him and her, right? So, I'm washing my hands, and he's telling me what's going on, right? This is me all the way. Wash my hands. Okay, I'm not saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing at all. Wash my hands. Get a paper towel. Drying them. Turn them off. Pause. Anybody that uses like public bathrooms, that's how you wash your hands. You wash your hands first. All right. Get paper towels while the water is still running. And then dry them. Then you get the knobs. Turn them off. All right. So, dry my hands. Turn, turn, turn the water off. Throw it away. Walked out. Noticed her. <laughs> you not clucking me up either? Nah. Nope. Nah. I don't even know how you got in here with that knife. That's crazy. You must... I don't know how to... I don't know how to explain that. I don't. I really don't. Like, I don't. But I would've been... I would've been gone. Long gone. Just saying. I almost didn't wash my hands. Because of what you told me. Between you and homegirl. We well, lucky I'm a clean mother. And I wash my hands. Number three. High school. Okay. Submitted by Abby R. Okay. I was 15. Severely depressed. Staying in a residential psych facility for mental health. Right. I wasn't like the other girls and boys at this treatment facility. I was quiet. Shy kept to myself. The other kids were loud and violent and had to be kept from other people because they would either fight someone or try to hurt them with whatever they could get their hands on. In this facility, you had to go to school in the same building you lived in. In my classroom, there were four girls including myself and eleven boys. The boys were all very violent and talked to themselves and were very paranoid there was a guy named Jordan who I really liked, though. Joy? He didn't seem like the other boys. He seemed to be more like me. Quiet, shy, reserved. We talked whenever we got the chance, because the boys and girls weren't allowed to interact until breaks or lunchtime. Um... Well, Jordan and I started talking every day. Oh. He was sweet, funny, and caring. Oh. Or so I thought. 
He and I even began dating after a few weeks of getting to know each other. Weeks? Oh. And that's when everything changed. See? See? Jordan became aggressive towards me when nobody was around. He would verbally insult me and make me feel terrible. It got to the point where he began to stalk me as well. <sighs> okay. Um. Hope I write down good. Um. No. There's probably, you know, people out there watching my reaction and, and they have a cutter buddy right next to them. You know, I'm talking like right next. There's a reason they're called a cutter buddy because they're right next to you, cuddling you the hell up. Right? And this is my thing, like in relationships and stuff, like. You got to get to know the person. I'm not talking days. I'm not talking weeks. You know. I'm talking. Like long enough. For you to. Because I would say months. But like. Everybody is different. Everybody has something about them. That. They don't tell off bucks. When I say off bucks, I mean they don't say it straight up. There's a probably a handful of people that too that do tell everything about them off bucks. But you know, it's not really it's it's more people that doesn't say it that don't say everything about themselves off bucks. Than it is that do tell everything about themselves off bucks. But either way you look at it, you got one and two, right? It's I don't know how to explain it. Like it's like no matter Ah, oh, damn. I don't know how to I don't know how to put this. Because let's say you are you're in a you're in a you're in a relationship, right? And everything's going great. And the relationship, you know, y'all been together for like ten years. Ten long, awesome, lovable years. Never really had a fight. If if y'all ever do, y'all make it up real fast. You know, it's nothing major or anything. 10 years but like and nothing crazy has happened but like somebody that's in a relationship and they already they only know any person you know they, they only they only been together for like let's say 10 weeks and on that like night like on that 10th week that they've been together the guy or girl could be a very abusive person, but you don't know where the hell it came from. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's just relationships can be can be a ah uh, can be a I don't they can be a bitch. That's all I can say. Regardless if you known the person two weeks Versus two years. I don't know. It's just something. I don't know. I feel like everybody always has something to hide. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's, that got. Wow. That got deep as fuck. <laughs> Night in October of 2016. I was allowed to go around campus by myself and have some alone time for an hour and a half. With your Adidas. After about 20 minutes of walking around campus, Jordan came out from behind a building and blocked my walkway. I asked what he thought he was doing and politely asked him to move so I could go on my way. But he refused. He then flat out accused <coughs> me of cheating on him with my roommate. Thank you. Who was a girl and I didn't swing that way. So I denied his accusations. I didn't cheat on him, not even once. 
He pulled me behind the building and dragged me into the woods near the campus by my hair. Thank you. What? Remember, I'm very quiet, so even then, I didn't want to scream. Just thinking about it made me feel embarrassed. Shit. Shit. You embarrassed to scream? Why you getting hurt? Are you serious? Yo, I would have been like- ah! Because you're embarrassed to scream. Get the, the man. Get the, get the cluck out of here. You tripping. But I did begin to beg and cry to let me go home. But oddly enough, what I was thinking was I'd be in trouble if I was out too late. Uh. I'm the kind of girl who is really good in school, and I try to be a role model. As he pulled me further into the woods, he came to a stop. He pulled me up off the ground and asked me why I was there. I said I had no idea, sniveling and wiping tears from my face. What kind of person does something like this? He said I had sinned because I had a relationship with another girl, and because I had cheated. I swore to him that I never did, and I told him I don't like girls that way. He went behind a tree, then pulled out something. Jordan had been planning this. There was rope behind that tree. He shoved me to the ground and tied my wrists together then tied me to the trunk of the tree. That's when I truly got scared. He was calling me the worst names while walking in circles around the tree. When he pulled out a knife from his back pocket, I finally had the courage to scream. Screaming for help, screaming for him to let me go, saying that I wouldn't tell anyone about this. But he said you can't trust sinners that they'll sin and sin again until they get what's coming to them. He walked up in front of me, lowered himself to my height on the ground. He began to raise his knife as he said, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. I screamed again, and just before the metal touched my skin, there was a flash of white and a few loud grunts. A staff member had tackled Jordan to the ground. <laughs> He managed to pin Jordan down. Then he radioed two other staff members, who arrived in no time and escorted Jordan away. The staff member who had rescued me untied me from the tree, gently undid my wrists. While explaining to me what had happened, he said the staff had begun searching for me, stating that I had never been late to anything, and that me not showing up somewhere at the right time was enough for them to go searching. Okay. And luckily... I had screamed right when the staff member had been walking by. He made it to me before I got hurt. As for Jordan, he ended up getting sent to a high security psych ward far away. And from what I hear, he's going to be there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It turns out he was in treatment for paranoia and unhealthy obsessions. I wasn't his first taken victim. He had taken another girl before he was sent away, and had done the same thing that he did to me. They ended up dropping the criminal charges, giving him a sentence instead that involved mental help. I was soon discharged by my parents, and I'm back home now, but the damage has been done. Ever since, I've been unable to walk alone outside anymore, uh, yeah. and I haven't dated anyone since. I think I'm going to be single for a while. You see, I find it nearly impossible to trust another person yeah. anymore. If I had a message to share, it would be to stay cautious while walking alone. And never blindly trust someone who you've only been dating for a short while. I mean, that should be like common sense. But like... Number four. My first boyfriend. Ah, damn. Submitted by Lay. Uh, it's coming. It oh was the God. end of my sophomore year of high school, and I was going through a phase. You see, I was a stereotypical good girl. No drinking or anything of the sort. Leader of school clubs, an athlete. You get the picture. I basically just went to school, then practiced and worked on the weekends. But then I started seeing this guy. 
Isn't that how all these stories start? Why are someone crazy? I thought he was really smart, and I kind of ignored all the red flags that he showed. He had liked me for years, <coughs> apparently. Yo! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I'm not gonna say that was the longest build up to a sneeze I have ever had, but that was kind of. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh my god, he's. Oh. Oh, this pollen is kicking my ass. But, like, I want somebody. I'll probably do it myself. But. I want somebody to comment below how many seconds that build up was to the, to the actual sneeze. Because I feel like that was like. It was like it was so long. The build up and anticip and anticipation for the sneeze was so long. <laughs> oh my god, it's crazy. Oh my god. Okay, I got. It. <sighs> All right. And I've been trying to get me to go out with him for nearly that long. I finally said yes to him one day after a group of our friends hung out and watched movies at his place. The whole time. He was making unwanted advances. At one point, all of us were going upstairs. I tried to follow the group, but he grabbed me from behind, threw me onto the couch, and kissed me. Damn. I was so upset that I left crying in my best friend's car. I'm an idiot. That should have shown me who he was. But I was young, and that was the first time a guy had shown that much interest into me. So, due to my really low self-esteem, which I think he knew about, I took his irredeemable actions as a flattering gesture, and I said yes when he asked me out. I know, stupid, stupid, stupid. This was all happening during the time my parents were split up. I lived with my mother who worked reliably long days. We also lived in the crappiest apartments in town and were completely broke. I didn't even have a bed. Just a mattress on the floor. Uh -oh. When we started dating, I had hours of free time that I did not want to spend there. So he would pick me up in his truck, and we'd hang out at his house. It started off fine, but he'd begin pressuring me to go to his room. Yeah. Just to cuddle, he'd say. There it is. I refused. That pretty pressure. I should have ended it right there and told him to take me home. But I didn't. He picked me up and carried me to his room, where he slammed me on his bed and started to take off my clothes. Oh, damn. I tried to make a run for it, but he was quick to get in my way. He smiled at me. Freaking smiled. I could tell he thought this was a game. That no matter how much I denied his advances, it only made him more excited. That's crazy. I tried to get past him again, but he was stronger than me. There was nothing else I could do. Afterwards, he left the room for a bit, and when he came in, he didn't understand why I was so sad and crying. But I stayed with him, because I thought that he was the only guy I could get. So that was my life for the next few months. Might To try to cover the pain, I started drinking, smoking, trying to find as many vices as I could to cover up the guilt I felt. Eventually, my parents got back together at the beginning of my junior year. We all moved into a pretty big house, and we had money again. Things were looking up, but my boyfriend was still as manipulative and blamed me for most of his problems. Motherfucker. He would control who I was friends with, what I wore, where I went. He even broke up with me a few times because I was talking to people I shouldn't be or didn't give him enough attention. But he was my whole world at the time, and I didn't want him to leave. I gave him that power over me, and I began to think that everything was actually my fault. Everything really fell apart when he and I were hanging out with a friend of his at his house. He took me upstairs again, but this time his friend followed. He wanted to watch us, and my boyfriend wanted to let him. I finally lost it. Everything I'd been feeling, suppressing, it just exploded. 
He had never seen me so angry, and he made his friend leave. After we were done, we all went back downstairs to chill, but his friend kept eyeing me the whole time. I was uncomfortable, and I made that known to my boyfriend. He suggested that we all go outside and smoke so I could loosen up a bit. We came back in, and his friend pinned me face down on the couch. I screamed and cried, and tried to get him off of me, but I couldn't. My boyfriend's living room downstairs had a small guest room attached to it, and the worst part was that the closet doors were mirrors. I could see myself being helpless in the mirrors, and it made it all the more worse and horrifying. They eventually took me home past my curfew, and I of course got in trouble with my parents. I cried myself to sleep, and in the following months I became a terrible and depressed person, smoking more, skipping class and practice, acting terrible to my parents and anyone I met. They stole my smile from me, and I generally didn't care about life anymore. Eventually, he finally broke up with me, and for the last time. And I had never felt more free. I finally walked away from my first and most toxic relationship. I'm 18 now, a couple of months away from graduation. Unfortunately, I see him and his friend all too often at school. I can't seem to go anywhere without reliving my biggest nightmares, but I look forward to leaving and going off to college, so I'll never have to see either of them again. I'm happy to say and know that despite the power they thought they had over me, they never broke my spirit. I'm going to accomplish my dreams, be happy, truly happy, while they wallow in guilt, toxicity, and fade away in a nihilistic lifestyle. Hey. I'm gonna talk to y'all for a second. Uh... And I can only speak on this because I've experienced this. Um, people in relationships right now understand that love is powerful. And there's a very distinct difference between liking somebody and, and having a crush. And, you know, just, oh, oh, you know, I just, oh. He's so pretty, or she's so pretty. You know, I love him so much. He's nice, and he does everything. She does everything for me. And then there's a difference between saying, I love you, honest to God. Like, I've never had anybody like you before in my life. Um, and I cherish every moment that we spend together, every second. And uh, I just want to let you know that I love you with all my heart, and I would do anything for you. Now, with that being said, that that anything part, that little that little that little phrase, I would do anything for you. Hey, some of y'all be taking don't some of y'all be taking that to taking like that literally like. There's a fine line, very fine line between loving somebody and then, you know, doing something scary and, 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 and you know, just out of your way, just, just horrifying kind of love. There's good love and then, then there's like bad love. Don't confuse the two. You know, know the difference. Like, I just, man, I just want y'all to be good. I want y'all to be happy with the one that you're with. And hopefully I made the right decision. Um, if you feel like you did, if you feel like, you know, you're truly happy with, uh, you know, your, your partner, you know, male or female, Give that person a kiss on her lips. Do it, do it. I'll, I'll give you a second. You know, just um, just do it passionately. 
I'll give you a couple of seconds. Um, uh, yeah. Because I want that to like, I want that, I want what you're feeling right now, I just want that to mean something. So, you know, just go ahead and kiss. Um, give me a couple of seconds. Neil was born. <laughs> but yeah, I man, I just want y'all to know the difference between like good love and bad love and that there's like a very fine line, thin line that can just easily be broken. So just watch out. You know, love is powerful. And it can be taken the wrong way or the right way. So, um, yeah. And number five. The Weird Guy at My Cousin's High School, submitted by Dalton. Hey, if y'all really did kiss, hashtag we kissed in the this comments. This story happened to my cousin, and That's it's true. from her point of view. She's in college now, but it happened when she was a sophomore in high school. Here goes. One day I was walking down the hall to my third period class, when I saw these people picking on this kid named Chad, okay. I only barely knew Chad. He was a good kid, though, and had we known each other better, I would have easily called him my friend. So, as any decent person would do, I came up to them, stood between them and Chad, telling them to stop being cruel, to treat other people with respect. This only triggered them to make fun of me as well until I threatened to report them to the principal. Then they finally rolled their eyes and left. Chad thanked me, and I asked him if he wanted to go get food after school. We met up after school that day, had a nice talk, and ate together. He asked if he could come over the next day. I told him I'd have to okay it with my mom. The next day, as I pulled into my driveway, I saw Chad standing in front of my door ringing the doorbell. I was mad, but he saw me and came to me to give me a note and a package. The note said simply, You will forever be my love, and in the package was a single rose. This was bizarre and out of nowhere. And creepy. It completely creeped me out, yeah. especially as he had never been to my house before. Why, oh. I had no idea how he found my house. Oh, uh. Over the next few months, we actually did start dating, and I was convinced that his gift that day was less creepy now, and more romantic. Mm -hmm. But then Chad started doing some weird things, like kissing me when I told him not to, and pushing me into his basement, as if he was trying to corner me to have his way with me. What? A few months later, before anything could happen, I broke it off with him. I had basically slammed my front door in his face. A while after that, I began dating a guy named Ty. Okay. But one day, Ty called me, asking me why this guy was banging on his front door and cursing at him. From the description of the guy, I realized it was Chad. Chad was very angry that I had been dating Ty and had followed him home to know where he lived, and was now trying to confront him. Eventually, after being unable to get inside Ty's house, he left. But the next week, Chad never showed up to school. I thought it was strange, but I didn't care too much. I had moved on from him. But then I learned that Chad was in the hospital, because he jumped off the roof of his house, citing his reason for doing so. Being me dating Ty, Chad was just a not-so-there guy. So, Chad, you have to move on. I have, and hopefully, you can get some well-needed help. Hey! Graduation day is like the Underground Railroad of high school. Finally, freedom. Finally, an escape from all the weirdos and creeps you were surrounded by. Now, as an adult, you get to be surrounded by more creeps, with no teachers or student resource officers to protect you. What, did you think it was going to get easier? No, no, no. School was just easy mode. Welcome to chaos mode. Everything's twice as expensive, twice as difficult, and you only get half the experience points. Oh, and everything's out to get you. Good night.
Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to send me your creepy Toys R Us stories at darknessprevails.org slash submit. Leo's if you want to support my channel for free, download my app at darknessprevails.org slash app called Spooked. It gets you all my content in one place. Or donate just one buck a month at patreon.com slash darknessprevails, and you'll get your name in the credits at the end of these videos. If you've got a little bit more, think about purchasing some merchandise at morbidmonsters.com. We've got shirts, mugs, and more featuring your favorite monsters. As always, here are my five favorite early comments from the previous full video, which in this case was about my three personal scary stories, so be sure to go back and tune in if you haven't heard it. Brendan Wilkinson says, You turn any bad day of work into a good one, so thank you. From one Brendan to another, I appreciate the support, and I sincerely hope that one day, you have a career you enjoy. That's what it's all about. Joel Kitzmiller says, My Toys R Us is going out of business since you said Toys R Us stories. Oh yes, I believe all of them are going out of business, I think. Which makes Toys R Us ripe with plenty of creepy confessions and stories. It's Ms. Hyde says, Yay, did you get a new mic? I've gone through three different mics since making that old video. Because any good entertainer always invests in himself. I'm telling you, only half my money goes into Snickers and Funyuns. Ever Applewhite says, If you were a color, you'd be my favorite. Oh, that's clever. If I were a color, it would be I ate too much Taco Bell and I'm in the bathroom green, oh. like my eyes. Oh. And Rosa Hood says, I love your accent in this. Thank you. I actually have no idea where it went. I think I subconsciously suppress it when I'm doing these videos now. <laughs> back then, it was just all out in the open. Yuck. Anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in to another video. I appreciate every last one of you. Even you, strange person who only comes to dislike my video but still gives me a view. <laughs> I love you something fierce. There you go. I'll be back soon, everyone. Until then, stay safe out there and stay creepy. I do want to apologize for all the like these sniffing, all that. Um, I just, I know some of y'all may be eating. So, I know me, maybe disgusting to some of y'all. Um, but yeah, um, if y'all did kiss, like I, um, said earlier in the video, comment, uh, we kissed. Um, in the comment section below. Um, I don't really t usually talk about uh, stuff like this. You know, that lovey dovey dovey dovey, that kiss, kiss, kiss. You find the song, find. Uh, you know, yeah, if you know what that song, if you know, if you know what that song is called, that's an old school song, right? Early 2000s. Um, comment that below. Um, but, yeah, man. I mean, all I really have to say about this is that, well, like relationship stuff is know the person well in it like well well before um y'all start dating or like talking um because you know you may you may um you may like not you may find out something when y'all are just friends and y'all are just regularly talking, you may find out something that you may not have known. It could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. You know, just give it time. Don't rush into the relationship. Because you do that, nine times out of ten, you clocking up. You're going to find something or you, you're going to experience something uh, that you never s saw or seen from that person before. So just throwing that, th throwing that out there. Um, yeah, man, if somebody is, you know, by themselves, eating by themselves, you know, doing anything by themselves, because I'm a nice person, and I like to, you know, help people out, and I try to comfort people, and I try to be friendly with people. But, hey, hey, 
if my stomach says otherwise, and if my Adidas says otherwise, hey, I'm not going over there. Sorry. You tripping. I don't care if you're looking at me in a sad way, talking about some. Nah, don't give me that. Nah. I was about to go over there until my Adidas said, Bitch, don't go over there. You clucking up if you do. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but this video should not, <laughs> this video should not have been this, this long. Um, at most, it should have been like 40, 45 minutes, not a goddamn hour. <laughs> but I, you know, I do talk too much, but that's just who I am. I, I love talking. Um, do I like to hear myself talk? Maybe. Um, uh, but you know, that's, I don't know. I just like talking, I guess. Um. Sometimes I, I don't know when to stop talking. You know, sometimes I just talk just to talk. Um, kind of kind of like I, I'm doing right now. Um, I seen a comment the other day saying, I think it was on my last video. I don't know. It was something, something recent. Somebody said, uh, I think, I'm paraphrasing here, but I think somebody said, I'm I, uh, I don't know, like, I'm trying to, or I'm trying to, <sighs> I think the comment said, I think Gator is 99% straight, but that I think he's like 1% gay. No, bitch. I'm, <laughs> I didn't mean to call you that, I'm just saying, it just came out. Um, I 100% straight, just saying, you know, I was just raised by females, so I tend to do a lot of feminine shit, you know. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, a lot of y'all know I'm not. So, you know, but I can, I can, you know, because I'm an actor, I can definitely play like a gay guy. I did, a, I, a, I acted out with my gay friend, um, a monologue, right? And when we acted it out, it was like a gay scene. And when we acted it out, Right? Because I'm in class right now, right? So, like, everybody in the, in the, like, the audience, the students that was watching us act, including the teacher, the students and the teacher, after, you know, the scene was over, they thought I was gay. And I'd tell her, and them, yeah, I was gay in a scene, not in real life. Don't get the game to it. Like, I know I'm a great actor, right? And I know I killed that shit, right? But I'm getting the game twisted, boo. Because if you think I am, hey, hey, I can show you real fast, you feel me? <laughs> no, but look, man, in all seriousness, though, um, you know, if, 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 you know, if you truly love your significant other, your partner, Male or female, um, straight, gay, whatever. If you love the person that you're with, hashtag love. And I'm talking about some like real love. I'm not talking like that high school love. I'm talking like some, you know, some real love, man. So if you truly feel like you love this person and y'all love each other, comment down below, hashtag love. And let me know what's up. And if you stayed until the end of the video. I, I don't know. I was about to say something. But I, I lost my train. I hate that. I hate when I think of something and it's right there in my mind. But as soon as I try to say it, it's gone. So my train of thought is gone. Um... So, um, Neil's porn. Keep it, keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.